you know what I mean? And I just happened to be the one that was good in my camp, in my circle. So anytime I used to go to parties and that, it was like open mic time and they used to run the rhythms. I'm the one going through the crowd, the short one, like through the afro. <laughs> going to the mic, shelling everyone, yeah, go on and go on and your time, your time. Today I'm going to be chopping it up with someone who is a chart-topping act, TV host of a really successful TV show, just an all-round talent. We have Conan, you always bring the noise, you always bring the talent, and you're an inspiration. So Thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, you like that, it's <laughs> yeah, sweet, like you know? It. It's yeah, sweet, you know? Come on, the young big guts. <laughs> no, it's important. Um, I have always, from the moment I met you, um, we've had conversations and you've always pulled out the bag exactly what you said you were going to do. And I think that we kind of lose the importance of that in the very fast life that we we live in. Like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And things get lost in the moment. Yeah. I'd like to go back and speak to you about uh, early beginnings, humble beginnings, um, coming from a place where people don't make it out. Uh. And I know it sounds really dramatic, but in reality, it's the <laughs> truth, you know, um, let alone to come out, to become the rapper, like how do we how do we make that happen? Where does where does Conan come from? For me, I just feel like it just starts with believing in yourself, man. I know it sounds kind of cliche, but like I feel like that's where it starts, man. Like as a kid, like I always wanted to be more than just normal. And I feel like my family played a big part in that. And like my dad was a reggae singer, famous singer, so I feel like that was a bit of a like a a start for me. Like I don't feel like a lot of people have that in their life where they can see someone that's actually famous. And as a kid, when you're going around that, like, you look like your dad, your dad's on the radio and stuff like that. So I feel like for me, that helped a lot with the dream. And to be fair, and I don't feel like I've said this in an interview, I feel like it's a lot of like, just watching films as a kid, like Disney films and shit like that. Like that, that helped, I feel like imagination played a big part in me dreaming and always feeling like I can do bigger than what's in front of you. You know, like when you watch them, shows and the little kid goes in the garden and he's the one that sees the elves. Yeah. I always wanted to be that kid. Like, I always wanted to be the kid that discovered the pot at the end of the rainbow. Like, I wanted to be that kid from down the road, from the ends, you get me? And as well as man's dad being who it was, who, who he was, sorry, so. Where you came from, like the area you came from, wasn't yeah. an affluent background. No. So how did you access the, I guess, the tools that you needed to start to to, to be the artist? Because studio's expensive, right? Mm, yeah. Um, tools, mics, etc. anything that you want, uh, like it's, it's not cheap. Traveling to and from studio, like these are th all things that come with a cost. How did you manage to, to pull that all together? Like when I was growing up, it was a lot of like, I was involved in a lot of street things and like that's where my mind was at. Like the music thing was secondary. It's like, yeah, we do music because everybody does music. You know what I mean? Like everyone's got a 16 bar, everybody's got bars, raps, going to the shubs, grabbing the mic. You know what I mean? And I just happened to be the one that was good in my camp, in my circle. So anytime I used to go to parties and that, and it was like open mic time and they used to run the rhythms. I'm the one going through the crowd, the short one, like through the afro, <laughs> going to the mic, shelling everyone, yeah, go on and go on and your time, your time. And that was that was Gypset, right? Yeah, that was the Gypset era. So like I was the one that everyone would come and look for. When the, when this like I could be winding up a gal to a beanie man or something. <laughs> and as soon as they switch it to the grime or the garage, it's like, Where's Conan? I'm like, yo, well go on, like, yo, yo, it's time, brother. Like, you're representing arting, like, you're, you're the man of arting. So that's what kind of gave me the first confidence of like, like going on the mic and spitting bars. And that's why I met Reds and like from Gypsy O. And that's kind of where then obviously me and Crep threw that and then that's how the kind of pattern started. Okay, so you and Crep met each other. You weren't, you lot didn't go to school together, weren't no, family no, no, friends. No, 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 no. We, we met through other men them. Obviously his brother were all from this, like Gypsy Hill, everyone was linked up. And then I'm on a bus with him one time. And I remember, I don't know, I was going through his phone one time. It was like a pearl drop, old school. And I've got in his voice note, in his recordings. I don't know why I was going in there, but I, I must've been playing. And I was like, I heard in someone bars and you get me like, boy, get Sabo, jump on his back like a piggyback saddle. I'm like, right, who's this? He's like, that's me. I'm like, right, you're hard, you know? He's like, you reckon? Yeah, I'm like, no, you're hard, bro. Then I've hit reds like, right, Crep's hard. He's like, was well, he hard? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, now I need to bring Crep to Crep's in. You get me? And that was how we kind of became a trio and it was like, yeah, that was the man them, like, that's who the bars was. I always find it crazy how people get to that moment, you know, like that you actually 
find out that you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you yeah. have to have the moment where you might be shit. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. But he was practicing, though. You see, he was, like, he was practicing. He was definitely test running his thing. He was test running it. I, I happened to hear it, you get it. And then, yeah, it was me, Reds, and Crep. And that's how the, the thing kind of started. Okay, and there were, there, were, there were some some darker times, um, and through those darker times, you were able to emerge the the artist that you are now. Mm. I, I don't know how much you want to speak on that. You spoke about it a lot in your music. You know what? To be fair, when I really thought we could do this thing, I was like, when I went to jail, and then I think I was on a wing, and I remember everyone talking about um, gigs is opening up for Lil Wayne. And for me, I was like, what, Lil Wayne? Like, <laughs> what? When I come out, yeah, 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 it's on now. Like, man are, what, man are doing American supports and that. Like, for, for us, that was crazy in the kind crazy of, like, you're hearing deal. ends and I'm hearing Lil Wayne and I'm hearing, like, big state, like, I think it was in Stratford Rex at the time, I think. And I'm hearing that, I'm like, that was inspiring to me. I'm like, Yo, I was gassed. I'm like, I'm ready to come out. I'm writing my brethren from jail. Like, yo, when I come out of jail, bro, <laughs> I'm not doing the grime thing. I'm doing the rap thing. Like, that must bro, have been the the, like, the longest double sided paper. Yeah, bro, uh, I was like the return of the champion. Watch this, da 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 da. And then <laughs> we're in the can, and then man's, we're listening to Tim Westwood and Chips on there, and they're like, yeah, Chipmunk and Ice Kid. And I'm like, bro, I'm with Bouncer. Me and Bouncer's banged up, so I'm saying, bro, who's these youths? Like, and I'm listening to them bars, and he's like, I'm the grime scene savior. I'm like. I can spin these shoots. Nah, I'm not Westwood, yeah? Like, I'm, gass, I'm gassing myself. I'm hearing gigs, I'm hearing chip, I'm hearing ice kid. I'm like, bro, the scene's moving. Like, for me, I, would, I never ever took it seriously. I, like, obviously, I always believed I wanted to be something when I was telling you earlier, but when you go on the roads, that kind of fizzles out. For me, I feel like that was an eye-opener because you're, you're in jail, you're with different people from different areas, and you're hearing all these things happening on the streets and on the radio, and you're like, yo, like, these things actually can happen. Like. I, I just think it's crazy where how you 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 found in so many different adversities in your journey a way to make a bit of magic mm. um, because it's really easy to live in the moment. I always say that you should go and feel the full spectrum of emotions: um, depression, upset, anger, rage, mm. and happiness, and all of those as well. I'm not just trying to make people sad, but often it's really easy to live there. But somehow you've been able to climb out and just been like, actually, you know what? I'm going to make something out of this and I just feel like that's really inspirational mm. were there any moments where you're just like I'm I can't do this anymore after Tsunami come out we done the little iTunes number two etc and then winning all over May then like that just after that a situation happened with my stepdad and ended up getting killed and mum getting shot and etc and I feel like that time was when it was like yo like forget everything you know what I mean like there was a stage I remember um like I had been out of my house for about three months, I think it was, and I was going to get my clothes. So they let me come back, it was a murder scene, so they let me come back and get some bits and bobs because I was in the same tracksuit for about four months, three months. And I, they've let me take some bits and I put in the back of the van and I remember driving my cousin to his house because he was, I was staying at his bed at the time. And then I remember we was driving and then like I could feel a breeze on the back of my neck and I'm like, well, what's that? So we've looked in the, the rear view and the back of the van's bust open. So all the stuff, all my stuff gone. We drove around the block three, four times, everything was missing. So like, I feel like for me, that was a breaking point because like, I just went four months without none of my stuff. Obviously at the same time, my stepdad was dead, my mum was shot. My whole family was scared to be around me. I'd be outside my cousin's house. She's telling my other cousin, get him out of here. We've got kids here, get him out of here. He's dangerous, get him out of here. Like no one wanted to be around me. So I was holding that inside me and trying to, you get me, like, stay normal. But then when I lost all my clothes and stuff, like, for me, that was breaking point. I remember I went there and I just, I just broke down. Like, I'll be honest, like, God don't put you through things you can't handle. And it was like, it only tests, like, the strong. So that kind of gave me a booster and, like, mentally, like, is that, like, bro, like, you're still here, like, you could be dead, like, man up kind of thing, like, bro, like, there's, there's, there's more to come, like, if, if you didn't go through this, like, what story would you tell when you make it through the other side? Do you get what I'm saying? And it kind of got me, like, you know what, let me just keep going and keep pushing. So you've, 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 you've then gone through a massive life transition, yeah. a, a full, fully-fledged breakdown. What was, the, what, was, what was the moment where you was like, right, we're heading to the studio, 
I'm gonna, I'm doing some damage today. I mean, he was outside my friend Luke's house. We, we used to call him Frets back then, but now he goes as Luke. He's in, dis he's in um, Disciples, and we How Deep Is Your Love. Okay. So back then he wasn't doing house. So we was outside his house, and he was like, Ro, you lot need to do the oldest thing. And it was like, what's the, I was like, Ro, what's the oldest thing? And he's like, Ro, ain't you seen it? the Jay-Z thing like, with Kanye? And I think we was in his car park, and we were sitting in the car, and he's like, oh, you and Crack, what should do? It should be hard, like, going back to back, like, bars, and I'm like, all right, come and do it, innit? Fuck it, like, come and do it, like, I'm on it, like, why not? All right, cool, so we did that, and then Crep's like, well, I want to remix this paranormal thing that I got, like, so he wants to get better people on it, and I'm like, what well, you reckon? I'm like, yeah, do it, innit? Then I've done my verse last, so if you hear it, I'm talking about the situation that's happened in the verse, but people didn't know at the time what I was talking about. So we've done that, and then we've done Otis, and we're like, all right, cool, we'll do Otis first, and then that will lead into the Paranormal Activity remix. Then... Press play, who shot it, Danny Streets now. He's doing his thing, big up Danny. He went missing. So I was on him, like, bro, like, threatening him bare that. Like, at the time, I, I, I was going through it, innit? And this was my only kind of escape. So I was like, well, where's Danny at? Boom, he, he appeared on my birthday randomly. Yo, I got the video. Our birthday. Yeah, our birthday. Oh, no, yeah. yours is day after. Day after, after. Right? Yeah. yeah. So he's like, yo, I got the video. <laughs> and he's giving it to man in the slow motion that man wanted. It was like, oh, it was static, it was like, it weren't the proper slow motion. So I'm badding him, like, bro, you disappeared to give me some meaty slow motion type thing, you get me? Like when we're jumping off the little stairs. Whatever, man, we're putting it out anyway. I didn't have a, I didn't have a phone at the time, so Crep's just giving me the ins and outs of what's going on to her. We've put it out on my birthday. Fuck it, just put it out, boom. Boom, it's gone mad viral, like. I'm just, my phone just blowing up, blowing up, blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. Like, what's going on? I'm trying to just be my birthday, I'm just trying to enjoy it. Even though I'm going through wherever I'm going through, I'm trying to enjoy it. My phone just going off, going off, going off like it was mental. I remember staying at Luke's house that night, because he's the one that told us to do it anyway, but we went out, done a little bowling, tried to take my mind off, obviously, the situation. Woke up in the morning, we got like 2.9 million views in one day. Like, I think Crep's phone would be like, yo, yo, bro, look at the YouTube, look <laughs> at the YouTube. I'm like, well, what's going on? I'm all hangover, I'm looking. I'm like, right, is that rude? I'm saying, first thing I said, you screenshot it. Like, do you screen munch it? Because that yeah, was the vibe then. Yeah. Do you screen munch it? Brother, I've got the screen munch, bro. It's lynch. It's lynch. <laughs> I'm waking up, threats kicking him. Like, bro. He's like, what's the matter, bro? I'm like, bro, man's got two points out of a million views, bro. He's like, what? I'm like, bro, the thing has gone crazy. Like, and for me, that moment there was like everything that just happened before that didn't exist. And then there was there was still some, so like you've gone through all of that to get to that moment. And then yeah. some people in the industry were like, nah, these lot fake their views. Yes. I feel like we was the first to get this internet beef, the internet trolling, like we're the first. Like I feel like the first moment of, nah, you didn't do this and everything's viral when, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, like people are like, you faked it. Like, and for me, I'm like, bro, I'm wearing the same clothes for like four or five months, bro. Like, do you, I ain't even got a phone. Would you, how do you think we know how to do that off on the streets, bro? What are you talking about faking views? I don't even know you could do that. Like, Remember, YouTube's not been out that long, you know? So it's like, how do you think we've learned <laughs> to just do that out of everybody else? Don't make no sense. So you're going to get whatever you're going to get. You're going to get the backlash. Um, going into little shops and that. People are playing it. I remember Bangles has shouted us, like, that same week, I feel like. And we've ended up going to Bangles' studio. This is the first time we've linked up with Bangles. Bangles, man's met Bangles, and then we're staying at the studio making songs that Bangles is now. This is so we're rolling with Bangles and going into shops, and random people are just playing Otis on their computer. And we're like, right, this Sick. is real. Like, this is real. Like, going into a car garage to go and get signed, and he spun the computer, and then, like, huh, you're the guys. And people <laughs> are playing, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, it was real. It was mad. We was getting phone calls from like Universal, like in America, and Warner in America, and it was like, it was surreal. Like, in Bangles studio, man's phone just popping off, popping off, popping off. Like, yo, it was crazy. So you're going through all of this. That, that's a mixture of emotions. Yeah. Like, up, down, up, down. Yeah. And then there's a moment where you get your first check. Yeah. What was that first check and how did that come about? Long story short, um, we've, we've met, we've linked up with another producer called ADP. And he's like, oh, can we just make some songs? You want to make a mixtape? We're like, yeah, whatever. Then me and Kreps had a conversation and it's like, all right, we're just going to make whatever we want to make. Because... The labels is telling us to make this, that, and a third. Then other people's like, nah, man, I don't feel like they've got it in them. They're, they're like presenters. Like, they're, they're funny, like, and in deck, like, they're not music guys. Like, they should just go into presenting type of thing. So it's like, all right, cool, fuck what everyone else is on. They're saying Ant and Deck. Yeah, they're calling them Ant and Deck. So it's like, oh, they're like, put a guitarist in the group and we'll sign you, like an N dubs type thing. So we're like, all right, fuck all that. 
let's just make something that we like, and it like fuck it, let's make the music we make. So we ended up making Young Kings, put out Young Kings, found funding ourselves, and etc. Ended up um, putting it out that got a Guinness World Record highest chart and independent album ever, and that's when the check come. So then now the labels want to have a conversation, and it's like, how are these guys in the charts, and we don't know who they are? What we need them, so we're having meetings, etc. Boom, um, won the mobile. Like it was like everything, the ball started rolling for us. It was like, yeah, boom, we're in. And one of the songs is connected somehow virally again. And the Americans are talking about Don't Waste My Time and they want to link, man. When you're negotiating that album deal, it's the same as like any business deal, right? Mm. You're going in there and it's a bit harder because you're the product. Mm. And it's hard to know what your value is because even though you know you're doing all these numbers, how yeah. do you quantify the, like, the, the, yeah. the number? So how was that for you lot, like going in and sitting with the record label and saying, we want this? I'll, I'll be honest with you, that was like the hardest part of our career and it's very, had a domino effect. Like, I feel like it's taught us a lot. Like, remember the game was in such a mad turmoil, like so many people been dropped at that time. Mm -hmm. And the radio, like back then the radio ran the music. So it's like, wherever the radio is saying they're going to play and champion, that's what's happening. So at the time the radio was like, yeah, we're done with the grime thing. They're not, they're not connecting. We're going to go back to bands. So when we're getting signed now, the labels are basing what we're going to do in the future off of what people have done in the past. So it's like, yeah, the grime thing was here for five minutes, so we think they deserve this. And then when we're sitting down with the, the lawyer, the lawyer's like, sign it, sign it. Don't matter what it is, just sign it, because they're not signing no one. Just take the check, take the money, just sign it. Like, he, it was a bit pressure-ish, and I'm like, why is he like pressuring me like that? Like I didn't really like that. And I'll be honest, I've never told this story before. And I feel like I like, I'm just gonna say it because I feel like you should know. Anyway, we when we signed it, before we signed it though, I was a bit off on it. And because the pressure was a bit much, it was like sign it, sign it. And I remember speaking to my old manager, right? And th no, if I'm lying, I'm flying. He's, po he's, he's phoned me and we're in the studio and I put him on loudspeaker old manager and he's like yeah like what are you lot thinking about the deal we're like yeah we want to sign it but we want to wait and see what happens and like on god shams yeah, his voice changed in like a like a demon's voice sign the deal sign it now sign it sign it i got so shook i threw my phone on the floor if i'm lying i'm flying wallahi and me and crep just staring at the phone on the floor like what the fuck his voice just changed into like a gremlin and all he kept saying is sign the deal sign the deal sign the deal and i'm like what the fuck like, I dropped the phone and stepped back like this, and we're just staring at the phone for about three minutes. Like, I'm like, did you hear that, bro? He's like, yeah, bro, like, what the fuck's that? Like, that's mad. So I picked up the phone and I phoned back my manager, like, yo, bro, like, what happened to your voice, bro? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, bro, your voice changed, bro. He's like, what are you talking about? So from then, I was a bit, yeah, yeah this is a bit funny. Ended up signing the deal anyway, but I was like five hours late. They still signed it. I was a bit skeptical. When you watch the video back, my face is a bit like, yeah, it's a bit weird. I don't know if I'm. Oh, I was overthinking yeah, it. Yeah, but because... you probably would have been overthinking it because when a contract comes, it's like that's a very scary. All we mm. we've heard so many horror stories. Number one, mm. this is your life because it is you. Mm. It's not like it's just like oh, I'm going to sign over. I don't know a bottle or whatever it is. This is this is me. I'm signing the rights to me basically. Mm and all I've worked for and my way out. Mm. So it means a lot to you, you know? So you're sitting there and you're reading through this. You now don't really feel your manager. Because bro, it's been a, it was a really spooky it moment. It was spooky, bro. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's one of the spookiest things I've ever seen and heard and was involved in. Do you get it? And the lawyer wasn't, the lawyer was very like, he just wanted man to sign it. Because obviously, you know the lawyers, they get their commission and whatnot, so. So you and Crept are super worksy. Yeah, yeah. Like, while you were signed, I think most people think the same thing they think when they when they start a business um, or they sign a contract at a label, that you sign and then that's it, everything's handed to you. Mm. But you lot didn't operate like that. You lot were out there contacting people, boom, I want to work with this person, I want to work with that person. I remember, do you remember calling me when I was with I was with T Pain? You was like, I want to work with T Pain. <laughs> and you lot kept, like, I, I don't even know how fast you got there. You got there so quickly. Um, and it's like, I just don't think people are like that. They're just like, oh, my ego, I'm not doing this. Mm. Like, what kept you lot in the game even when you were succeeding? You know what it is? I feel like there's just so much ground to cover and so much to do and so much little time to do it. So with us, I feel like we're just very hands-on. We want it done now. Like, if it can happen now, why not? And you were never shy about new artists. No. Nah. 
So a lot of artists in their prime uh, start making radio bangers and they only want to work with people that are part of the elite. Mm. Uh, talk to me about Abracadabra, um, you know, like... the like. You know what it is with that, yeah, with, with, me, with me and Crep, I feel like music's music, isn't it? And I would never, ever feel like just because you're not cloudy, like, you can't make, we can't make a hit together. Do you know what I mean? It's all about the music at the end of the day. Do you get what I'm saying? Because Michael Jackson wasn't always top tier Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Drake wasn't always top tier. Drake, you get me? And they've been making bangers this whole time. So it's just about if the song's right and the music's right and I feel your vibe, like we'll do it. Like it's no, there's no oh no, like you're you're a little fish for me. Like what like Who was the artist that you felt like out of everyone that you felt like, oh my god, we've actually done something major, we've worked with this artist? To be honest with you, working with Rick Ross was like a wow moment for me because like that was the first concert I went to was a Rick Ross concert. So, so he's like, this is, this is it. Yeah, so when we walk in the studio and he's like, yo, my niggas, like, huh? And yeah. doing all that, like, yo, you the hardest shit I've heard in the London. Like, it was sick. He's like, and yeah. Like, yeah, come I on. Mean. And like, yo, this shit hard. This certified shit, this is hard. Like, a man's saying, yo, man's, man's telling him, yo, add some ad libs, bro. He's like, what do you want me to say? Like, yo, two, that. And doing, like, huh? And certified. And gassing <laughs> up, you're like, yo, this is real, say, this is hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? That was a moment for me. Like, because I, I was, I'm a fan of the music, so that was a moment for me. And to be fair, there's a lot of artists that I met and I thought, yeah, this is dope. Like Ed Sheeran working at Ed Sheeran, coming to the booth and knocking out my quick Tory lanes and how fast he works. It's just like working with artists and seeing how fast they work and how good they are and how like how they believe in their thing. Like, like yeah, I got 30 songs. I got like 40 songs. I'm sitting on like 40 songs. Like, yeah, I just knocked out 20 songs yesterday. And they're like, yo, like... <laughs> I need like, to get back in the Yeah, place. like for me, like even Wiz, Wiz, when I first, when we first done a song with Wiz, we done a song with Wiz, I think 2016. Um, and he's like, yeah, I just done like 50 songs. But yeah, man, just working with all the artists and seeing how they are and just hearing stories from their point of view and how they're dealing with the industry. And then it's more than music, because you lot have, have you lot have travelled outside of music into entrepreneurship as well. Yeah, yeah. Opening Crep and Cones mm. um, obviously was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. You lot actually made music transpire into a restaurant business. Yeah. Um, how did you come to, to decide that you lot were going to do that? Um, Crep tweeted that idea, like, yeah, they'll be sick if we had a restaurant with Crep and Cones. And, like, everyone's retweeting it and it's like, Shit, we about to do this. Yeah, yo, Combs, what are you saying? I'm like, bro, you know I'm on whatever, my guy. Let's go. Like, scared money don't make no money. The idea is genius. Let's go. So, aside from those things, you yeah. have a number of other ventures, such as? Um, we got an um, agency behind the scenes. I ain't really launched that, so don't really want to talk about it. But we got some behind the scenes that people <laughs> don't know it's us, but it's us. Yeah, we got the TV show. We got the foundation that we have with the, with the kids in the schools. We was going and teaching them um, music production, songwriting, and we was doing after schools to keep them off the streets and stuff like that. So we was doing that. We've done that with Stanley Tech. Um, it's called Harris Academy now, so Krebs Old School, we was in there. Obviously, you now we got rap game. We've got new music coming out. Um, can't wait. I'm trying to think what else there is. I, I feel like that is a lot. That's, that's enough. And I'm, I'm interested to know how you split your time up um, to, to actually conquer all of these huge mountains that you probably take for granted as, as being normal, but they are all individually huge things that you're doing. How do we split the time up? You know what it is? You just got to just do it all, man. I feel like one time I was in a, a meeting with my old head, head of label and he was like, yeah, where's the music, man? And I was like, bro, we got X, Y, Z going on. He said, bro, Elton John's got X, Y, da, 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 going on. What are you complaining about? I was like, Ooh. yeah, big Elton John, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I had to just hold my corner. Yeah. I said, no, it's big. And, and the, that's the kind of level man's trying to reach, like that goat level there. So if he's got X, Y, and Z going on and he was doing the music as well, like, why am I complaining? Okay, and you've come a real long way um, from your humble beginnings. Um, if you were to speak to young Conan and, and give some advice, or if you had someone who could give advice to you then, what would it have been? Don't worry as much, man. I feel like when I was younger, I was so worried about not, not, not winning and like not getting to where I want to be in life. I feel like that was a big anxiety for me. Do you know what I mean? Like I've been homeless and going through all of that, there was always that like thought in my head that this can go left. Like, you're not exempt from bad things happening to you. You know what I mean? 
And I feel like that situation for me made me realize I'm not invincible and it can end badly. So for me, like chasing a dream, like it was like, yeah, I need to chase the dream because that was the thing that kept me from worrying about bad things happening to me. Don't worry, man, like things are not all bad and it will go well. And who is Conan? Who is Conan? Um, it's a young guy from Fort Neath, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> young goat, young legend. Hey, hey. Somebody that I feel like when I'm done with this journey, they're going to write about. And finally, we're, we're getting another album? Yeah, 100%. So yeah. basically, when? Like, when? Five, when? we're 97% finished on the album. So I've got a name drop from Crep. Any name drops from Cones on the new album? Did he give you a name <laughs> drop? You're capping. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give me the name. Did he give you the name? You give me the name. Hey. We got a name. To be finished, we got we got the name. We no, got... I said, oh, are you going to drop my name? Oh, oh, sorry, my bad. Um, oh, look, you forgot. No, nah, you know what, Shamja? That like, I'm going back into the booth. I got, I got, I got. I feel like I got one more song I want to edit. So, I might just slam you in there. You get there you it? go. Bow, bow. Come you lot. Yeah, witnesses, witnesses, witnesses. Anyway, you know, sometimes you've got to go for the struggle. You've got to go for it. You've got to put people on the spot and get your name in the songs. I didn't do it the first time. I didn't struggle the first time, but now we're here. But um, aside from that, what, what does the future hold? Um, just more greatness, man. The States is the next step for us. I feel like that's the next chapter in the Crepton Corner stories. And, and a bit of Africa, right? You know, a million percent Africa, like the world is artist or like, if you don't even know what we look like, you've heard of Crypto Conan before, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a TV show, whether it's the Euros, you see me, wherever it is. Out here. Uh, outside. And, and, and if not, you've definitely attended a lit, 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 lit PD party. Yeah, of course. This is my point. So we're, <laughs> like, we're covering all ground. So, oh, yeah, and I forgot about that. Yeah, we do play dirty parties as well. Yeah. I knew there was something we was missing. Mm -hmm. There's probably more things. But yeah, like the future hold, I feel like we're just expanding the brand, man, and taking it where it's not been taken before. Hey, we love to hear it. Shall we, shall we toast to that? Come on. Hey. That way. <laughs> <laughs>